Hello and welcome to my presentation, Educating Clients to Say Yes. My name is Paul Boag and I'm sharing with you in this presentation about 20 years worth of experience of working with clients because let's be honest, it's not easy, is it? Working with clients can be incredibly challenging at times and this presentation is designed really to make your life more fun, more enjoyable, to make projects go smoother and to end up with happier clients at the end of it. That's what we all want, isn't it? We want to enjoy our jobs and have happy clients, but it's so often it's not like that. And in this presentation, we're going to change all of that, but, we're going to begin by talking about oranges, as you do. There is a link here, please bear with me. I don't know whether you remember, but there was a set of commercials, probably in the 80s, I'm guessing, um, maybe the 90s, of uh, The Man from Del Monte. Do you remember The Man from Del Monte? He did a whole series of adverts um, advertising Del Monte orange juice. And it was a very interesting premise um, and these, these adverts have stuck in my mind and I want to play you one just so you can get a sense of what these adverts were like and don't worry, it will link to the topic in hand. What the man from Del Monte knows about fruit you can taste in our juice. Monte Pure Juice. Why don't you say yes to the best? I can't really tell you why these adverts have stuck in my head so much. Maybe it's the white condescending imperialistic man um, or maybe it's the humble hard-working uh, uh, subsistence farmer I don't know but there is something about these ads that have stuck with me I I really hate the way that this superior so-and-so turns up in his immaculate white suit and judges the hard-working subsistence farmer is his fruit going to be good enough and then there's this really annoying character phrase of the man from Del Monte he says yes and everyone is exuberant because his work the farmer's work has been accepted and he's good enough even the flipping donkey seemed pleased about it and that kind of judgmental attitude of those ads really gets under my skin but and here's the link back so often that's how our relationship with our clients is isn't it we do all this hard work and then we wait for the client to judge it will the client say yes um, or will we end up doing another round of iterations and it's a really frustrating process isn't it where you have to do that and there are some great um, tweets out there of people showing their frustration designers showing their frustration um, at this whole process process because it is so incredibly demoralizing isn't it I mean we end up doing endless rounds of iteration trying to please the client trying to make them happy and believe it or not it's not just your kind of rank and file web designer that's struggling with this all web designers are struggling even the famous ones take someone like Sarah Parmenter Sarah Parmenter talks around the world on web design she's hugely respected and even she gets frustrated with the client relationship and I think the problem is is that relationship is broken on both sides there's frustration on both sides clients feel just as frustrated as we do they feel like we don't understand what they're all about why don't we get it why don't we understand what they're trying to achieve but it doesn't stop there they also feel like um, we're always so negative we're always the ones that are saying no that technically it's not possible or it's going to damage the user experience or it's going to create accessibility problems they have all of these ideas they're excited about the project and then we come along like a giant wet blanket and ruin it all 
And what inevitably ends up happening from the client's perspective is they end up doing our job for us. Because we don't get it, because we're constantly blocking them, they end up micromanaging. And we hate that, yeah, sure, but they hate it as well because they feel like they're paying us and then doing the job themselves. So things are totally broken. It's, you end up with this kind of thing. Right? With the design comp being sent through to you with scribbles all over it of the client saying, make my logo bigger, move this to the left, change the colours, all of that kind of stuff. I've even received things like this via fax where they've printed off the design, scribbled all over it and sent it back to me. And that is a horrible experience for everyone. But the problem is that the relationship is fundamentally broken. There is the wrong relationship between designers and clients. But that's what we're talking about in this presentation. We're talking about a different way, a different relationship. But before we can form that new relationship, we need to understand that the very foundations of the client-designer relationship is broken. And I think that's because the relationship is built on almost a Downton Abbey kind of relationship, an upstairs, downstairs, a servant master relationship. And that is a problem. When the client just sees us as a supplier, we are nothing more than a servant. A servant that is expected to blindly follow the client's um, requests. That we're very subservient, we're very submissive to the client's needs. And oftentimes as web designers, we almost get to the point where we're afraid to express our opinions. Afraid that if we express our opinions, then we might not get repeat business. Or if we haven't yet won the project, we're afraid that if we, we argue with them or we disagree with them or we suggest an alternative, that they may go with another supplier instead. And it's no wonder that in these kinds of scenarios, the butler is the person that always did it. The servant is the one that gets frustrated and angry and just wants to throttle the client. And too often what we do is we go to one of two extremes. Either we become the argumentative person, the person that's always saying no, the difficult person, or we just give up on the project and say, look, you can have whatever you want. I'm fed up with arguing. And neither scenario is right. There has to be a different way. And I'm encouraging you today to take part in a revolution, to fundamentally restructure and reorganize the relationship with your clients. So how do we go about doing that? How do we change that relationship with our clients? Well, there are two aspects that I want to look at in this presentation. The first is we need to become seen as the expert that we need to be considered an equal partner in the relationship. And so we're gonna look at how to achieve that. The second thing we're gonna look at is how to be more positive in the relationship, how to not be that no person, how to get it um, and understand the client and work with them in a positive and excited fashion. So that's what we're gonna be looking at in the rest of this presentation.